Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today for uh, the Office of Medical Student Research Lunch and Learn series. Um, the uh, idea is to provide all of our medical students with um, a synopsis of um, different opportunities that they have to get involved in research. Um, and today we have Tori Taniguchi, um, who's with the um, Center for Indigenous Studies. I messed that up. Center for Indigenous Health Policy and Research. Um, I think that's the, the name of the center. Uh, but she's going to talk about op uh, opportunities today to, for medical students to be involved in um, research with her center and the work that they're doing there. So, Tori, I'll let you take it from here. Sure. Let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Okay, am I all shared? Yep. All righty. Um, well, thank you, Dr. Hartwell, um, and thank you everyone for joining in on this virtual Lunch and Learn. Um, again, my name is Tori Taniguchi, and I am the data director here at the Center for Indigenous Health Research and Policy um, at CHS. And today I'll be talking to you about what our center is, what research we have going on right now, and then as well as some student opportunities um, related to research and education that you might be interested in. So I first want to begin with a little introduction of myself and our center. Um, so I received my master's of public health in epidemiology in 2016 from OU. Um, and then after I graduated, I took a research epidemiologist position under Dr. Valerie Bluebird Jernigan um, at OU Tulsa uh, to work on um, three of her R01 studies she had going on at the time, um, focusing on food environment work and reducing diet related health disparities among Native American communities um, here in Oklahoma. So in January in 2019, we actually transferred to OSU and Dr. Jernigan established and launched our center here, um, which is called the Center for Indigenous Health Research and Policy. And our center's efforts focus on three main areas of reconnection, education, and training. And our center brings together scientific collaborators, indigenous knowledge holders, and community leaders um, to eliminate health disparities and cultivate health and wellness um, within ind indigenous communities. And the center does build upon the mission of Oklahoma State to improve the health of Oklahoma's most underserved populations, um, which would be the Native American population that we work with. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some background on health disparities in Native Americans and why um, the work at our center is so important. So Native Americans do have higher morbidity and mortality from chronic disease, um, such as hypertension, diabetes, and obesity compared to the all race population. About 40% of adult Native Americans are obese. Um, Native Americans are twice as likely to develop diabetes compared to whites. And almost 35% um, of Native Americans develop hypertension compared to about 26% of whites. Uh, Native Americans also has, have significant disparities of chronic, health, uh, chronic disease risk factors, such as low physical activity um, and low fruit and vegetable intake and high tobacco use. And then another risk factor of chronic disease is food insecurity, um, which is defined as having the limited availability of nutritional and safe foods. Um, food insecurity impacts about 30% of Native American households compared to about 15% of non-Native Native American households. Um, and it's shown that food insecurity is also associated with poor food environments. So the limited access to affordable healthy foods, lots of fast food restaurants and convenience stores, as opposed to grocery stores and supermarkets. Um, poor food environments are very common in Native American communities, especially in rural Native American communities. So I'm going to briefly touch on health disparities and related risk factors in Oklahoma. Um, as I'm sure you know, Oklahoma is ranked 46th in the nation um, in regards to health outcomes. Deaths from cardiovascular disease among Native Americans in Oklahoma are much higher um, compared to um, the general U.S. at 367 deaths per 100,000 compared to 179 deaths per 100,000. Also, Oklahoma has higher rates of cardiovascular disease related chronic disease. So 40% of NAs in Oklahoma have hypertension, which is slightly higher than the national percentage. And we also found that 39% of Native Americans in Oklahoma are obese, 39% are overweight, and about 17% um, had type 2 diabetes. Native Americans in Oklahoma um, also don't get adequate fruit and vegetable intake. About 20% eat vegetables um, less than one time per day, and almost 50% eat fruit less than one, one time per day. 
Um, so as you can see with these statistics, the research we do here at our center um, is important in order to assist, assist with closing the health disparities gap within these tribal communities. So now I'll talk about um, the type of research we do here at our center. So we use a community-based participatory research orientation, um, also known as CBPR, for all of our studies. Um, I'm not going to read this entire definition, but CBPR is a research approach that integrates education, research, and social action uh, to improve health and reduce health disparities, um, highlighting that tribes and communities are equal partners with academic institutions. Um, the principles of CBPR include co-learning, long-term commitment, and mutual benefit. And CBPR is especially important because many tribal communities have a mistrust for medical research um, given their history of exploitation. Um, now, many tribes actually have their own institutional um, research review boards and the approach of CBPR and improving quality of life among tribal citizen, um, citizens is parallel with their tribal review policies. So I just briefly went over our center and what we do, um, some background on health disparities in Native American communities. Um, so now I'll go into what student opportunities we have going on here at our center. Um, we do offer opportunities related to research training, which includes assisting with grant writing and submissions. Um, right now we are funded primarily from the National Institutes of Health. Um, so students will be able to gain knowledge and fundamentals of how to write a competitive research grant and how to execute a grant submission. Um, students will also gain research experience by working on some of the center's active research studies, um, which include our fresh and cheer studies, as well as our food pharmacy intervention, um, which just recently was funded, and I'll go more into these active studies in a couple slides. So along with um, the research training, we do offer uh, students education training, um, and this will begin in the fall of 2021. And there are four courses that will be offered as part of the center, and they will be open to um, master students, doctoral students, medical students, um, in, um, under the CHS branch. So the courses are principles of indigenous health, community assessment, organization, and intervention within indigenous population, populations, public health programming in indigenous health systems, um, and indigenous food systems and food sovereignty. And the curricula for these courses are still being developed, so we don't have full course descriptions as of yet. Um, another opportunity for education training is with our new fellowship program that will launch in the spring of 2021. Um, and it's called the Indigenous Model for Public Health and Community-Based Translational Research, uh, Translational Science, excuse me, um, which is also known as IMPACT. And this will also be open to master's, doctoral, um, medical students, as well as postdoctoral students, and which postdoctoral students um, will be prioritized. And the fellowship program comprises of up to two years of research and training um, specifically in indigenous health. So two to four fellows will be selected per year, and there are three components required of impact fellows. Um, for the educational component, fellows will complete four, those four required courses that I just mentioned. Um, to earn the OSU CHS certificate in Indigenous Health. Um, for the research training component, fellows will attend and present at monthly center-related seminars and will be assigned to an academic mentor to assist with them to develop a scientific paste, uh, paper or, or poster for a research conference of choice. Um, and lastly, for the practice component, fellows will gain, gain hands-on research experience by working on one of the research studies um, currently being implemented at the center. And these focus areas include cardiovascular disease prevention, diabetes prevention and management, food system intervention research, and policy environment and healthcare system interventions. Um, and the fellowship program will collaborate closely with the College of Medicine, Allied Health, Social Work and Nursing, as well as tribal partners. So now I wanna take the time and talk about our three active research studies that students will have the chance to work on to gain some research experience. So for all three of our current um, CBPR studies, we have partnered um, or will partner with different tribes um, throughout Oklahoma. So there are 38 recognized tribes. And for Fresh, we partnered with Osage Nation, um, which is in the green, located in the northern part of the state. And it is headquartered in Pawhuska, Oklahoma. Um, for our CHEER study, we partnered with Chickasaw Nation, um, which is located in the southern region and encompasses 13 counties with its headquarters in Ada, Oklahoma. And then for the food pharmacy study, we plan on partnering with Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma, 
which is located in the southeastern portion of the state, and that is headquartered in Durant. So for the first study, I'm going to talk about the FRESH study, and this is the Food Resource Equity and Sustainability for Health. And it is a farm to school nutrition and gardening intervention with the goal of increasing fruit and vegetable intake and reducing body mass index, blood pressure um, among Native American families um, residing in Osage Nation. So these are the specific aims of the study. Um, the first aim is to characterize the Osage uh, food environment and assess the correlation of food environment with obesity, hypertension, and diabetes. Our second aim is to develop a culturally relevant um, multi-level community gardening intervention and evaluate the efficacy and in increasing fruit and vegetable intake. And also we are looking at reducing food insecurity, BMI and blood pressure among those age families. And our last aim is to create and disseminate a web-based multimedia manual and documentary, documentary film and evaluate that its effectiveness and in increasing tribal readiness and capacity to improve tribal food environments. So the FRESH study's purpose was to build upon the vision of Osage Nation, which was to create a sustainable tribal food system. And we did this by incorporating Bird Creek Farm, um, which is the tribal farm located in Pahuska, and producing fruits and vegetables for distribution for this intervention. And the outcomes we were interested in for this study were fruit and vegetable intake, as well as um, food insecurity, BMI and blood pressure in adults only. Um, the FRESH intervention took place in tribally affiliated early childhood education programs, um, which includes the Tribal Head Start, the Wazazi Learning Academy, and the Language Immersion School. Um, the design of the FRESH study was a multi-level weightless control trial with a target sample size of 250 families um, in four Osage Nation communities. So two of the communities, um, which included five of the ECE programs, were assigned to receive the 15-week intervention in the spring semester of 2018, um, while the other two communities, which included four of the ECE schools, they served as controls in the spring semester, and then they actually received the intervention um, in the fall um, of 2018. So FRESH did have multiple components to the study, which targeted the child, parent, uh, teachers, as well as the cooks. So the children received a 15-week classroom curriculum with comprised of both classroom and gardening activities. And the parents received a 16-week online and in-person hybrid curriculum. And the teachers at the schools were in charge of facilitating the classroom curriculum, and they were given supplies to administer the activities. And then the cooks also received a six week um, best practice menu cycle. And this included adding more fruits and vegetables um, to the menus while reducing um, high fat processed foods. And all of the menus actually incorporated the locally grown pr produce um, from Bird Creek Farm. So we developed both the classroom curriculum and parent curriculum um, with tribal leaders to make sure they were culturally relevant and included food sovereignty components um, and promoted healthy lifestyles and made sure they were budget friendly. So both our classroom um, and parent curriculas were adopted using these four resources listed. So the classroom curriculum was adopted from the Early Sprouts Nutrition Curriculum and this curriculum was 15 weeks in length and included three themes. And each theme included sensory activities, cooking in the classroom, and a family recipe kit that children could take home to their families so they could prepare a meal together. Um, theme one also included a reading activity to introduce the vegetables of the week. Um, the purpose of it, this cur curriculum was to expose children to vegetables in the garden and classroom settings with the aim of increasing the likelihood that um, the children would taste and consume more vegetables. Um, for the intervention, we used six target vegetables. We used tomatoes, bell peppers, spinach, squash, um, butter beans, and carrots. And children were supplied with their own cooking equipment um, that they could use in the classrooms as well. And for the garden component, garden beds were actually installed at all ECE intervention schools. Um, so each classroom received one garden bed, um, and this was tended by the Bird Creek Farm staff. So the 16-week parent curriculum was a hybrid of online lessons and in-person meetings. And the online lessons were 12 weeks in length. And this was, uh, they were adapted from the Choose Health um, LA Healthy Parenting Workshop. And it included topics, oh, sorry, it included topics on nutrition education, um, lifestyle, 
education and healthy parenting practices as well. Um, and these, this online curriculum was self-guided and the lessons were designed to be completed um, in 20 minutes or less. So each lesson included an introduction on the topic, a video representation um, of the lesson, written text of the lesson, um, as well as a weekly review and goal. Um, the four monthly in-person meetings use portions of the food sovereignty uh, material from the First Nations Development Institute and the Grassroots International Food for Thought and Action. Um, and this material was broken up into smaller segments each month at each meeting. Um, the in-person meetings also provided participants with the opportunity to learn about food sovereignty, um, discuss some activities in their communities, sample some indigenous recipes, um, and as well as provide feedback from the online content. So for Fresh, the Osage Nation um, ECE site directors and teachers did most of the recruitment. Um, in order to participate in Fresh, the parents had to have at least one child aged three to six enrolled at an ECE school. They had to plan to remain in Osage Nation for nine months and were willing to attend um, the monthly family nights. We collected data on demographics, biometrics, um, which includes height, weight, and then blood, blood pressures for adults, um, food insecurity, diet intake, um, shopping habits, uh, food environment, and physical activity. So for parents, we measured height, weight, and blood pressure using um, some rigorous protocols that were developed. We also administered a parent survey um, that assessed questions on food insecurity, um, physical activity, et cetera. And then for dietary intake, we used a 24-hour dietary recall using the ASA 24 website, um, which is a free web-based tool that enables multiple automatically coded um, um, self-administered diet recalls. And then we also asked about fruit and vegetable intake on the parent survey using the food behavior checklist. So for the children, we uh, measured height and weight and used a couple of methods actually to assess dietary intake which was the plate waste measurement and willingness to try. Um, so plate waste is an objective measure that we used um, to measure food intake. And this was done by giving children a snack container of the target vegetables. And the containers were first weighed um, before the snack, uh, snacks were on the plate. So they were weighed empty and then re-weighed with the addition of each vegetable um, to get a pre-weight of each vegetable before the snack was then introduced to the kids. Um, so after the tasting period, we then collected and weighed the snack containers again to get consumption weight for each vegetable. So at the same time the snack containers were introduced to the children, um, we rated each child's interaction with each vegetable using the willingness to try skill. And this ranged from zero to four, um, which zero was child did not remove vegetable from the box, and four was child actually um, put the vegetable in their mouth and swallowed. So we also obtained health status and physical activity of children um, from parent proxy uh, using questions asked on the parent survey. So of the 173 parents in the FRESH study, the mean age was 33 years old. Um, a majority were female. Uh, more participants in the intervention group identified as Native American. Um, level of education kind of varied depending on group and household income also varied depending on group. And then some more parent demographics. Um, over half of the parent participants were employed full-time. Almost 70% were married um, or had a partner or significant other. And the mean number of kids in the household was about three. So we're currently still working on some post-intervention analysis for the parent level health outcomes. Um, so we have preliminary, preliminary data right now regarding baseline. So the mean BMI at baseline was 31, um, and the mean arterial pressure was significantly higher in the intervention group compared to the control group. Most participants reported good, excellent, or very good health, um, and more participants in the intervention group uh, reported that they had a medical provider diagnose them with high blood pressure compared to the control group. So we did uh, look at food security, food insecurity at both baseline and follow-up, and we actually found that food security scores decreased significant, significantly in both groups. Um, so lower food security score means more food secure using the USDA household food security scales. Um, so it's interesting to see that even the control group reported um, being more food secure at follow-up, and this could be in part due to um, the Bird Creek Farms increase in food production, um, which then could increase access to these healthy foods to um, the controls and intervention. 
So some child level results, um, most children were four, whereas there were some children in the intervention group that were six years old. Um, the gender distribution was pretty similar in both groups and parents, and like the parents, most intervention group children identified as Native American, whereas the control group um, children identified as more white or more than one race. Uh, most children were a healthy BMI and over 85% had excellent or good health um, as reported by their parent. Um, one third of households that at least had at least one child under the age of 18 who is overweight or obese according to CDC BMI percentiles. Um, and this table shows the adjusted mean consumption of each of the target vegetables and grams in both groups. There was a significant increase in lima beans and butternut squash consumption in the intervention groups. Um, and these foods may have been less familiar to the kids and by offering um, this curriculum like we did, it may have provided an opportunity for children to become more accustomed to the foods they didn't normally eat. Um, so in foods that they were more familiar with, such as tomatoes and carrots, we didn't see uh, really any improvements in intake. So this is the mean scores of the willingness to try vegetables. Um, in the unadjusted model, we found that children in the intervention group were more willing than the control group to try bell peppers. And there was a trend toward increased willingness to try lima beans in the intervention group. Um, however, in the adjusted model, these differences were not significant any longer, um, but the bell peppers were close. So in conclusion, we did find that a gardening and nutrition intervention may help increase vegetable and fruit intake among the Native American children. And this is the first um, gardening and nutrition randomized control trial to be implemented within a Native American reservation. Um, so currently, we do have a couple of publications on the study already pertaining to the menu component. Um, we are currently working on a methods paper right now to be submitted, um, hopefully by the end of year, um, as well as separate papers on the parent curriculum and the child curriculum. Um, so interested students in this study um, have the opportunity to look at all of this data we've collected and um, can run some analysis of their own and propose some manuscripts for publications as well. So our second active research study is the Chickasaw Healthy Eating Environments Research Study, and this is a multi-level food box intervention study to reduce blood pressure and body mass index among NA adults um, with uncontrolled hypertension living in the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma. So the specific aims of the CHEER study targets all three levels of environmental, individual, and policy, um, and I'm not gonna read all of them, but I'm focusing on um, aim two for um, this presentation today. Um, but I also wanna highlight that we are still in recruitment and so we are still working on aim three as well. So CHEERS is funded by the National Institutes of Minority Health and Health Disparities and it is one of three projects under the Native Chart um, Center. And it's a five year study with the purpose of improving blood pressure control among Native American adults with uncontrolled hypertension. Um, the outcomes of interest for the study were blood pressure and body mass index as our primary outcomes. And then we're also interested in looking at diet, physical activity, and perceived food access. Um, and the design of the study is a cluster multi-level randomized control trial. And it's multi-level because we are targeting among those three levels that I just named. Um, and it's cluster randomized trial because it's randomized by groups instead of by individuals. Um, and in this case, it was actually randomized on the county level. And so there were four Chickasaw Nation uh, counties included in the study. So two randomized the intervention and two to the control. Um, the total sample size will be 400 participants and it is a six month intervention administered as the rolling cohorts. So we're following participants in both treatment groups to see if there are any changes um, in study outcomes before the intervention compared to after. And the CHEERS intervention launched in June of 2019. Um, so that is when the first cohort received the intervention um, and we are currently on the fourth year, so it is still ongoing. So first we assessed the food environment in Chickasaw Nation, and this was done by evaluating the number and types of food stores in each of the counties. And we also looked at some demographic characteristics. We then looked at the different um, types of feeding programs that were already implemented within the nation, um, so we could identify some gaps and priorities for the tribe. And then we finalized communities with high and low access to um, food programs and stores um, for randomization. And we found that two towns located in the Carter and Pontotoc counties actually had higher food access. Um, and then the other two counties, um, Johnson and Murray, actually had lower access. 
So after determining um, food program gaps and identifying priorities, we wanted to increase access to healthy food in order to increase the positive out, increase positive health outcomes in Chickasaw Nation. Um, but since some of these counties had poor food requirements with low accessibility to healthy foods, um, we decided to go ahead and tailor an existing Chickasaw Nation food program, um, which was called Pack Promise, to um, provide participants with delivered food boxes. We ran a nutrient and cost analysis to find the most economical foods that met the DASH guideline, um, which is a, a diet designed to help and treat and prevent high blood pressure and lower BMI. Um, so the interve intervention boxes used for this study contain shelf-stable food products, so participants were able to prepare meals um, on their own. So this, these are the items that were provided in each of the food boxes. Um, I'm not going to read each bullet, but healthy foods did contain at least a serving of dried or canned fruit, fruit, fruit per day, canned vegetables, um, unsalted nuts or seeds, beans and lentils, and then two servings of fatty fish per week. So the second aim of the study gets more into the individual level components. Um, while participants in the intervention group received the food boxes with the educational materials um, and the recipes, both treatment and control groups received a tribal gym membership, a Fitbit to assess walking, and access to a culturally tailored um, phone application called Aya, which is an interactive walking app that's grounded in Chickasaw storytelling and history. And then the last name of the CHEER study um, targets the policy level. So once the intervention is um, over, we will complete, complete a documentary and multimedia manual um, to distribute to the rest of Chickasaw Nation. And this documentary will include video, photos, um, narratives of tribal leaders and Chickasaw families, as well as research into historical and current Chickasaw Nation dietary practices. This manual will be web-based and contain a toolkit of intervention materials using a combination of video footage, um, study tools, and study findings. So recruitment for the CHEER study began in the fall of 2018, um, and we are currently still in recruitment for the third and final cohort. Um, our tribal partners actually do all the recruitment for the study um, at various Chickasaw Nation establishments, such as health fairs um, and some health clinics. To be eligible for the study, participants have to meet one of two blood pressure criteria. Um, the first is participants have to have a self-reported previous diagnosis of hypertension by a medical professional and a systolic blood pressure of 130 um, or higher at screening, or for participants that don't have a self-reported previous diagnosis of hypertension, um, they have to have a systolic blood pressure of 130 or higher at two separate appointments um, on, on two different days. Um, so along with blood pressure requirements, the participants are eligible if they're 18 years or older identify as Native American, um, live and plan to remain in one of the four counties for at least a year, and are not currently pregnant or at least six weeks or more postpartum. And then all eligible participants who agree to participate in the study are then scheduled for their uh, baseline data collection appointment. And so for data collection, we are collecting demographics, um, assessing biometrics using measured height, weight, and blood pressure, as well as documenting any medications the participants are taking. Um, to assess diet, we are administering um, a 24-hour recall um, using the ASA 24 again. And lastly, each participant completes online surveys that ask about their health, physical activity, food environment, et cetera. And then participants are, uh, actually can do the diet recall and online surveys either in person um, at their data, in-person data collection appointment or over the phone with a staff member. So currently we have 268 participants consented in this study um, with a retention rate of about 80. Um, in the first cohort, we have 136 participants, um, 99 in the intervention group and 37 in the control group. And for cohort two, we have 78 participants, um, 50 of which are in the intervention and 28 in the control. And we are still recruiting for cohort three, but it is currently on hold um, due to the pandemic right now. So this is the baseline demographic characteristics for the 214 um, participants in the first two cohorts. Um, the mean age was 50, about 60% were female and education completion varied. So a little over a quarter completed high school, some high school or received their GED. Um, and another 26% had some college schooling 
20% graduate college, while another 8% obtained a postgraduate degree. And a little over 40% of participants had an annual household income between 20 and 50,000. A uh, mean number of adults living in the household was two, and um, children under the age of 18 was one. So although the first two cohorts have completed their intervention, since we are still in recruitment, um, we do not have any an analysis done um, for post-intervention. Um, but this table shows the health characteristics of cohorts one and two before they receive the intervention. So the mean blood pressure was 137 over 83, um, which we knew this would be elevated since that uh, at baseline, um, since participants had to have a high blood pressure to be enrolled in the study. 77% of participants were classified as obese, um, and almost 30% reported that they had diabetes. Um, the majority of the sample were non-smokers, and 20% had no moderate or physical activity levels um, reported in the week they were surveyed. Um, the mean number of days spent walking at least 10 minutes in the week um, was about four days. Um, so again, since this study still is in recruitment, we don't have any outcomes analyzed at this point. Um, however, this study is one of the first to use culturally tailored methods to assess a food box intervention on health outcomes and diet among Native American adults. Um, we expect more improvement for all outcomes in, um, with uncontrolled, uh, improved, sorry. We expect more improvements for all outcomes such as improved blood pressure and body mass index among the intervention group. Um, and results from the study will be disseminated to expand all of Chickasaw Nation and to other Native American communities that are interested in improving, in improving their food environment. Um, so for this study, students will have the opportunity to help with cohort three data collection, as well as the chance to run some analysis of interest in drafts and manuscripts as well. So our last active study right now is the Food Pharmacy Pilot Study, um, which we just received funds for from Amerigroup, Oklahoma. And this study will provide nutrition education, connect patients to local resources, and support healthy eating patterns in order to reduce um, challenges to healthy eating. So food pharmacies are a newer approach to increasing healthy food intake, and they entail a few components. So first, a provider identifies an at-risk patient um, via diagnosis of a diet-related health condition, so diabetes, um, obesity, or hypertension, um, or by a qualifying income level. And then the provider writes a prescription for the consumption um, of subsidized nutrient-rich foods, um, which includes fruits and vegetables. And then the patient is then able to redeem the prescription with a partnering food supplier, um, which could be a local grocery store or a farmer's market, either within their community or on site at the health clinic. And the cost of food typically ranges from $10 to $50 per week. Um, since this approach is so new, data on the subject is actually limited. Um, however, emerging research has shown that these programs increase fruit and vegetable consumption, they can reduce body mass index and reduce A1C levels um, among diabetic patients. And this program also increases food insecurity, um, improves disease management, and, and can increase healthy eating knowledge. So for our food pharmacy study, um, we're tentatively calling it food as medicine, and we plan on evaluating BMI, hypertension, A1C, diet, self-rated health, and food security among Native American adults in both an urban and a rural clinic here in Oklahoma. Um, specifically, we plan to partner with the Tulsa Indian Healthcare Resource Center um, and the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. And this will be a 16-week program um, and we're aiming to recruit 50 individuals per site, so a total of 100. And we'll collect data at baseline before the intervention, and then again at 16 weeks um, once the intervention um, is completed. So again, this study um, just received funds, so we are in the very early stages of planning. So interested students in this study would be able to partake in intervention planning, um, as well as implementation of the intervention. So our center has a handful of student opportunities for both research and education training. Um, again, the research training includes working on active studies that I just went over, um, doing some post-intervention data analysis, some manuscript writing, um, and then interventioning, intervention planning and implementation for the food pharmacy grant, um, as well as being trained on some grant writing skills. And our education training um, includes the opportunity to take those indigenous health coursework, which were the four classes I listed earlier, um, as well as um, we do have that impact fellowship that will be implemented um, in spring of 2021. 
And these four courses will actually go toward the OSUCHS um, Certificate in Indigenous Health for Fellows. Um, so I've listed my contact information and Dr. Jernigan, who is our center director's contact information um, for any students that are interested or had any um, questions they wanted to shoot emails to us. Um, and then I've also included a link to our Facebook page. Um, so you can go on there and see what we have going on as well. Um, I think we have some time for some questions. There was a question in um, the chat, and I just wanted to get this on our video. Um, do you know if the Impact Fellowship will be integrated for medical students, and will any of the four courses discussed be part of the new OSU Palm Tribal Health Track? Um, that is a good question. Do you know how the Impact Fellowship? Works? I actually uh, don't know about that, but we can. I don't know either. It. Okay. Yeah, we That's can. A good question. All. Yeah. Does this chat? Is this saved on the chat or? Yeah, and I can um, copy it out so we can um, email because he said he had to leave. Um, oh, does anybody okay. else have any questions? Oh, there's a question on here that says, how would one go about becoming part of the third cohort of the cheer study? Um, so actually Chickasaw Nation is recruiting in um, like Ada and like Pontotoc counties for the third um, cohort so interested students could help with data collection um, for this third cohort not actually be in the third cohort but help with um, some online surveys or go out to the field um, and do some blood pressure measurements um, once we get uh, participants recruited for that third cohort which I don't know when that will be because everything's on hold right now due to the pandemic so Samantha, did you have another question? Oh, that was it. I was just saying thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if there's no other questions, I think we're good to wrap this up. Um, thank you, Tori, for um, talking and giving the presentation today. Um, and this is the last one of the semester. We'll start again. Um, our next presenter will be Dr. Holly Ballard um, in February. So, um, have a good break. Good luck on finals next week if that applies to you. Um, and uh, look forward uh, look for more um, emails from the med student research to uh, for opportunities to to get involved. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.